I worked at uh, NBC before uh, this, this current tour, and uh, we were thinking going into the 2010 Olympics um, how we could use the, you know, the, the new genre, frankly, at that point of social and how we could uh, amplify the stories of the Olympics around uh, the broadcast and, and use that in some way to, to sort of amplify the storylines. So uh, we worked uh, This is from Erica in Baldwin. We created this idea of uh, what we called the, the Twitter tracker. And we built in, and this time it's going to sound so archaic, but we built in about 2,000 keywords around the Olympics. So this would be everything from gold, silver, bronze medal, the you know, 180 athletes, uh, other phrases and things that would we know we could track on. And then as the Olympics progressed, we created this uh, graphic and that basically was like a, a heat map or a trend meter. And essentially what it did is it took a, we married up uh, images that were coming through from the game. So uh, a Lindsey Vaughn finish. Um, and then if that was started to get amplified on Twitter, we were able to show that image would grow and get larger and larger. And we didn't know what we were doing. Um, we thought it was a <laughs> kind of a, <coughs> a cool thing to do. Uh, but it turned out that the producers uh, also started to use that in order to determine you know, what the news stories were because there are things that really surprised us. So, you know, for example, we saw that curling, I mean, it, it, you know, again, it's a Canadian Olympics, so it may sound obvious, but, but the fact in the U.S., curling really took off as a very, very material, social conversation around those Olympics. And we would have never thought to cover a curling a a at that scale. Yeah. And, <laughs> and yet we did because we were able to see graphically that people were talking about curling in more so they were in some days than hockey or figure skating or other elements. So that was the first time that, that I really had that kind of aha moment that we could build something that would both benefit us and our fans digitally, where they can contribute, they can see the velocity, they can be part of the conversation. But then on the production side, we're also able to get visibility into conversations and trends we would have otherwise not been able to see because we're sitting in a truck trying to guess what is right for our fans. In but it's feels to me, and I don't know about you guys, like it feels to me like every day is the beginning of <laughs> something new, some new trend. We were talking about Meerkat and Periscope, and we can come back to that in a few minutes, but, but every month, every, you're trying to reimagine how should all, the, all of this work, and fortunately, audiences are figuring that out for you, because one of the great things about television, and the reason we're here to talk about it is, television is and has always been lingua franca for people. It is, it is something that everyone shares and that they can talk about in it and we can talk about whether it was game of thrones or empire or whatever and a huge percentage of the people in this room are going to know what we're talking about because it is mass media and and what's great about social media and the reason it works so well is because people want to share those common experiences with each other and so for us it's about getting into that slipstream and trying to make it even better for our audience you can't really predict what an audience is going to like or what hashtag they're going to start. So what are your best planning practices, knowing that a lot of it is going to change? Well, I'll start from the producer side, and then we can kind of jump over to the network. You know, from, from the producer standpoint, the social or not, it always starts with the creative. Mm -hmm. So we have to have a great show that's going to connect with an audience. Mm -hmm. And then the question is, how does social get layered in in a way that really makes an impact? So, for example, in our show that we are now producing for NBC, it, um, it's based on a UK show called Ant and Dex, Saturday Night Takeaway. Neil Patrick Harris is going to host a live show on NBC for 10 straight weeks. His big variety show. It's, yeah. it's a big variety event. And what, what we are focused on is how do we connect with the audience in a whole new way. So, for example, if you watch our UK show, we will now be going into your home live for the first time to sing along, to prank you. And you know, all of these elements are not only gonna have a video piece, but they're gonna have a whole new social connection piece as well that will hopefully be unique um, to television. It first and foremost, it starts with great creative. You know, it all you you can have a great social plan around around bad creative, and it's not going to do a lot for you. Mm -hmm. um, but if you ha if you start with an amazing show, and Empire was from the beginning, it was an amazing show. It was um, cast extremely well. It was written amazingly, um, and the and so we knew that we had something really fabulous. The the 
the other thing about Empire is that it was produced by, um, by our studio for our network. And so we were talking from the very earliest stages um, about how to launch that show, what, you know, what the plan should be and so forth, and having mm -hmm. really deeply integrated discussions. That and the, uh, you know, and a lot of the, um, the cast on that show was super into, you know, into Twitter and, and Instagram and so on and so forth. And so it, it made those discussions a lot, a lot easier. But, what, but all shows are not created equal when it comes to social television. You have to have things that people want to talk about. You can have shows that are really amazing to watch and are not highly social television shows. It doesn't mean they're not an incredibly successful as TV shows. They just may not be great social television shows. Mm -hmm. And so the thing about the, that made Empire work is there were a lot of OMG moments built into Empire. There was a lot of, oh my God, I can't believe she just said that. And like, that Bookie. is so funny. I've got to repeat that. <laughs> I've got to tell my friends that line, like that's going to be funny. You know, there was so much of that mm -hmm. in, written into Empire that you could tell from the beginning we were going to have a lot to to tweet out, to to create ma memes and gifs and so on and so forth. And so then it becomes about how are we going to build the the framework, the scaffolding around this show so that when those things happen on air, we get that media out to the community. People can start pushing it around to each other in addition to creating it themselves, which you want to encourage them to do as well. So. Um, it's you know it becomes that conversation. And there are there are times that you that you rack your brain and you say, oh, I really want this to be a social show, but what's the hook? Like, what is it that people are really going to want to talk about? And sometimes it's hard. Sometimes you have to work really hard to come up with those things. I think, I think uh, if you look at the sports, you know, franchise, I think from a live event standpoint, they're among the uh, sort of highest engaging uh, experiences, particularly because they're live. I think the role that it depends on the sport. In the NFL, the role that your team plays and the players within those teams play, it's a, it's a bit of a mix. And I think the point that you made earlier, or we all made earlier, is that there's a, there's a sense that the fans now are part of the team, and there's a lot of loyalty that goes into the success of that. And, and so it, I think it's, it's, it's difficult to s ascribe a lot to the player's role. It's critical to it. And I think you look at the way that uh, some of our, our stars, Tom Brady recently, has done a lot on Facebook, which is great, but he doesn't do very much on Twitter, which I think is a very interesting dynamic in the sense that it fits his character better. Um, and so each one of the, you know, 1,600 or so... Long-lasting, long career. Well, it, no, it's also, <laughs> well, I think it's more about packaging than it is about duration. Um, and the irony is that it's, uh, some people are more comfortable on Twitter, and I think that's one of the one of the questions you asked earlier about how do you build a social plan, and I think the key is also understand that each of these platforms are very, very different in mm -hmm. how people use them and how people connect to them, and, and Tom Brady is much more comfortable on Facebook, somebody else is much more comfortable on Twitter, other people are much more comfortable on Instagram, people like to use Pinterest, uh, millennials are all over Snapchat, uh, the NCAA stat there of you know 20 million streams being done over the course of the uh, start of the Final Four. Um, you know, so I think there's a, as you build, a, we look at live sports, the player component is important, the role the teams play in voice is really important, the role the broadcast partners play, and, and how we kind of amplify the story during the course of broadcast. Um, and then there are different ways that we prepare and look going into it, which is how do each one of these platforms work better? So one of them is duration-based, so Facebook has a certain window of time and a certain way to have a conversation versus Twitter versus Instagram. But then there's also the, well, how do you get the, and amplify that message using the right hashtag structure, and then how do you measure that success coming out of it? Um, mm -hmm. And we've had some pretty good experience around uh, Super Bowl and some of our other major events where we're using Facebook, for example, on video in order to try to really drive home and the engagement on that platform with a partner of ours. So, um, you know, the, a clip of an NFL highlight moment on Facebook we'll get two or three million views in an uh, eight or 10 hour window, which is pretty remarkable velocity. Um, and, and that's something that we spent a lot of time looking at. And as you see, you know, sports being talked about a lingua franca of the country, how do we continue to use these platforms to be smart about when we publish, how we publish, and what kind of content? Mm -hmm. uh, so that all kind of goes into that plan as part of the players, but uh, anything else is good.